We continue to look ahead to the 2024 season, and it is a privilege to be joined on the show today by Mark Benavidez, who is the head football coach for William Penn. Our stop today is Oskaloosa, Iowa, and Coach, year two is what we're looking for, year one in the books. You all finished four and six last season. Let's look back just a little bit. How was the first year there at Oskaloosa? Yeah, it was solid. Um, you know, we had a lot of a lot of memorable games and different things that happened. Um, a number of games that were close losses and and uh, you can say moral victories, but as a coach, you know, moral victories get you fired. So, um, I mean, we, we had a lot of ups and downs at times. And um, the biggest thing for me is a lot of optimism moving forward. You know, I'm a big believer that year two to three is one of the biggest, you know, changes you can have as a program. And right now we're going from year one to two. And so, um, extremely excited, you know, spring ball, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, you know, our guys were a lot years ahead of where we were a year ago. And those are all things that hopefully springboard us forward uh, to having a successful season in 2024. You know, coach, I like your take on that too, because I, I remember watching during the season, there were so many times it was just, it was so close. And, and you even started off the year with that six, two victory, which just was a, a, an anomaly in and of itself. And realistically, I mean, only Grandview kind of got away from you a little bit. They were all very close. What are the, the uh, odd things, too? Again, let, I'll use that word anomaly. Uh, four and six on the year, four and one on the road. Oh, and five at home. What what happened at home? Yeah, well, we had some tough opponents, first off. Um, no, like just going through the season, like you mentioned, that very first game winning uh, six to two or, or whatever. I've, I've tried to forget a lot of these scores. But, um, you know, that's what's going to happen. when We have a very un- inexperienced team. We didn't have a ton of seniors last year. Then, obviously, brand-new coach, new – new schemes on offense, defense, and special teams. And so um, the, the inexperience at times got us. It got us in some key moments too. Um, you know, just talking about some of those home games, our very first home game ended up losing, I think, by five points. And we had five offensive turnovers. At the same time, Sterling Ramsey threw for 477 yards, you know, and that's that's proof that it didn't matter how many yards you get, you got to go you got to go score and, and, and punch it in. But um, lost to a, a tough Benedictine team by a field goal, you know, Um uh, had some other other games in there, you know, Peru State homecoming. You know, we, we uh, played those guys when they were hot and they were they're a very talented football team. And, um, you know, that was a tough one. Then obviously Grandview, um, you know, those guys obviously have been undefeated for for quite some time now in the regular season. And uh, even though we're, it was a physical football game, gave them a fight. Um, that was a team that we hadn't scored points against in a few years. And we finally have accomplished that. But like I said, moral victories, they get you fired, you know. And so um, we got to do whatever we can to to uh, again springboard in this next season and and hopefully get it done. Well, let's let's talk about that. Let's let's talk about the spring. You all have completed your spring practices, workouts. Talk a little bit about how they look and as that experience now kicking in. You're starting to see that. Yeah, you know, a year ago we had spring ball started in I think mid April and finished um, early May. You know, we crammed a bunch of things down there and had a really late spring ball, in my opinion. This year. Um, we're able to finish, I don't know, a week or two ago. I, again, it's, it's already the past, you know, things are flying through me right now, but, um, when we started a year ago, it was difficult to get guys to simply line up, you know, our terminology from schemes were, were completely different. And, um, this year it, it was just night and day, you know, you're speaking from an offensive standpoint, how we do our formations, how we do motions and shifts and plays, um, just the signals we have. It was much easier as a coach not have to worry about some of those very base little details, uh, or excuse me, base details, and and get a focus really on the, the little thing. You know where where I put my hands on certain plays, how I do certain things, and um, you know very rewarding as a coach to kind of see how how guys progressed. Um, one of the biggest things as a head coach too is health. You know the best ability is uh, availability, and so um, you know we went through most of the spring without any major major injuries. Obviously, guys get kind of nicked up here and there, and and a couple little things, but fortunately uh, nothing that should be necessarily season long for us. And um, ultimately, again, like I said, a big weakness for us a year ago is inexperience. And, and we've gained a lot of experience just this past spring. Well, let's, let's talk about then on the offside, offensive side of the ball. There were a couple of sophomores that really led the way for you all last year, producing offensively. You mentioned Sterling Ramsey and uh, yeah, that 477 yards he threw, it was, it was week two, your home opener. That was one of the biggest offensive outputs in all of the NAI last season. Uh, he is returning, and also Des Loring in the backfield rushed for more than 80 yards a game for you. A couple places uh, to start. Yeah, um, you know Sterling specifically. He 
he's been a guy who's only really played quarterback for a couple of years now, um, being a skill guy in high school. And, and uh, he still has a lot of room for growth. You know, when I first got here, that's, that was a huge position um, to make sure we could solidify those guys, uh, not necessarily just him, but anybody that, that spot, anybody who's going to throw the football or hand the football off. And, and he's made strides again, another, another example in the springtime, a, a guy that um, I feel like he understands the playbook, like the back of his hand compared to a year ago where it's, you know, everybody kind of swimming and trying to stay afloat, you know, um, but even that, that position uh, a year ago, we had some injuries at quarterback spot and, and not a ton of competition. And hopefully we're not in that situation. Hopefully we've got some other guys that are pushing him to try to get that starting quarterback job and, and uh, just have a bunch of competition in that room. Des Loring, um, you know, a guy had a, had a great sophomore year, a guy that had a number of touchdowns and yards and some big games. Um, but again, a sophomore and, and him just like Sterling a number of different things they've got to work on to get better. And, and hopefully we've got a number of guys in that running back room that are willing to, uh, you know, push him and try to fight to be the guy as it is. We're a, we're an offense that's kind of running back by committee. And so, um, you know, he's not going to be the guy who's getting every single touch. Uh, I would expect him with what he's done so far this spring to, to get a good amount of touches, obviously. But um, again, we're really excited, excited to see those guys as they get older, as they're becoming juniors here and soon to be seniors um, a little bit down the road to see what they can, what they, what they can do, what they can progress. And, and how successful they can be for, you know, our 10 game stretch. You know, that, that really is though, coach. I mean, a, a running back or a, a group there, it's running back by committee, as you mentioned, and that Loring was still able to put together a season like he did, not getting all the carries all the time. It's pretty good numbers to, to work with on his part. So that, that's, a, that's a nice thing, I'm sure. No, absolutely. And, and when it comes down to everything we do on offense, really the biggest part is the offensive line, the trenches, you know, what they can do. Um, that's a spot where uh, we had an outstanding guard that graduated that we're gonna that we're gonna miss and, and miss not having that transferred here from my previous school. Um, but that's been a big focus for us when it comes to recruiting. We've gotten a couple mid-year transfers at offensive line and and hoping those guys push the other guys we had in the room and uh, just make it easier for a guy like Des to get more yards and make it easier for a guy like Sterling to to stay in the pocket and have more time to go make a decision or throw a football. So again, really excited to see. Uh, how that offensive line group can can perform here too, Coach. Let me let me ask you while we're there just a moment. Uh, you've had more time then, being in year two now of the program. How do you, how do you feel about recruiting and and the the group that you signed in February? Yeah, uh, again, night and day compared to a year ago. Um, when I first got here, January February, we had zero people signed by signing day. Um, the main focus at that point in time was evaluation of our coaching staff, evaluation of our players you know, checking inventory for equipment, what were, you know, base administrative things that need to get done as a head coach. Um, and so you, you win by recruiting um, and not to say we weren't recruiting, but there were some, you know, immediate things we had to go figure out before we focused on other people outside the organization. And right now we've, um, we are night and day ahead of where we were a year ago, you know, and there's still some things that are slowing us down. Like for an example, FAFSA, you know, the federal government kind of changing how they're doing FAFSA this past year, um, has delayed a number of people making decisions, understandably. And so, um, you know, where we're at right now, we feel very, very good. We still have a couple of key pieces that we're looking for. And, and uh, the day and age we're in right now, everybody wants to wait it out for that, you know, offer from Iowa State or whatever, you know. And so um, we're still in the, in the realm of kind of waiting it out for certain people in certain positions. But, um, again, very feel very confident with what we've got done so far. This email from Mark Benavides from William Penn here on Midwest Sports Net. I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here. We like talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, look at the defensive side of the ball, and I think one of the places that you, you would start would be Howard Huerta, who was an All-American last season, six interceptions on the year, and, and had himself a game a couple of weekends. Yeah, no, abs absolutely. He uh, best thing about Howard is just his work ethic. You know, you look at him, you don't think that this guy looks like an All-American. He's not some, you know, six foot two, 200 pound safety that's going to come downhill and kill you or or run with the best of them. Um, but he is always in the right spot at the right time. Um, he's the type of guy that even this offseason, he is watching film from practice a year ago. He's watching film from different games. He's got notes. Um, he's the type of guy that's kind of bugs us at times because he's in our conference room when we're about to meet and he's got notes all over the place, you know, and. Um, but I, I can't say enough good things about the guy. He's really well-respected amongst the team and somebody that ultimately, you know, you want your best players to, 
be some of the hardest workers and, and more respected guys. And that's exactly who he is. And highly, um, you know, highly recommend him for a job in the future and all these different things. But he's the type of person that uh, I'm, I'm definitely expecting a big year from him. And even if the stats aren't the same, I mean, again, he, he's in the right spot at the right time, which is a big reason for getting some of those interceptions. Even if the stats aren't the same, he's the type of person who's going to essentially be a coach on the field and help out um, some of those young defensive backs that we have or a potential new defensive back that we have and, and make sure that everybody's on the same page to, to be successful and, and shut the opponents out. And he brings All-American to that status, too, to be able to, to lead with that. So other people recognized what he brings to the field as well. Uh, Coach, from a defensive perspective, man, the defense last year seemed to do well. But is it one of those things, too, you know, from year one to year two, you've talked about night and day a few times. Um, was it easier to install the defense or the offense from last year, you know, just coming in in season one? Yeah, well – a, a big thing for us a year ago, um, you know, hired uh, Coach Jay Burns, defensive coordinator. Uh, he was with me on my previous institution and um, kind of moved some guys in different positions. And, you know, our co-defensive coordinator, Coach uh, Matt Byers, he was originally with linebackers. Now he's with DBs. Um, a year ago, spring, it was a very different scheme. You know, a lot of things that we had to change up um, during the summertime because, you know, hired some guys late and they didn't have a ton of time to implement necessarily every, everything come April a year ago. And so um, just seeing what those guys want to accomplish, what they want to do in certain facets. Um, we've moved some guys around with some versatility in certain players, some guys that can be like a rush rush edge or a guy be an inside linebacker or um, people that might be an outside linebacker or safety. Um, you know, the spring, we're allowed to do a lot more complex stuff uh, with some of those guys schematically. And, and um, you know, again, we're doing significantly more complicated things on offense and defense right now this spring than what we probably even got to in the fall time, which just as coaches, um, you want to keep things simple. You want to get to your players and go play fast, but we at least know, you know, the capability of some of our players mentally with, with uh, some of the schemes that we want to accomplish. And um, again, extremely excited at the end of the day, it comes down to what your players can do on the field. Um, and I think a guy like Coach Byers, a guy like uh, Coach Burns, they've done a tremendous job just teaching and, and uh, getting it to where our guys understand what they're trying to accomplish. I think you know, 2022, before I was here to last fall, they had decreased the opponent's scoring per game by, I think, 10 points a game or 14 points a game, something to that extent. And um, we knew getting here, that was going to have to be the big focus of the team for us to be successful. You know, some of the players we had inherited, some of the guys that were here, um, you know, we had pretty good personnel at certain positions and, and that's what we want to continue on. Now, for us to win a number of games, um, even though I'm, I'm an offensive guy, I'm a true believer that G defense is what's going to win championships and defense is what's going to uh, allow us to stay in those games. And um, that's a big emphasis, you know, those two guys and coach Grant Garth and some of the coaches we have just doing whatever they can to make sure that our defense is, is top notch. I know there are going to be some different names that show up when you look at uh, special teams play, some of the stats there. Talk a little bit about that area of the game. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're in a situation where we had two outstanding specialists, you know, at kicker and punter last year. Um, both of them graduated. And so Ethan Olivas and, and uh, Kale Crawford, um, great people, uh, great GPAs, great academic kids, um, and solid football players. And so with both of them graduating, um, we're in a situation where we've signed some new guys and as a head coach, it can kind of be nerve wracking because you're, you know, sometimes a kicker, he might be great in film, but how is he going to perform when you're down by two points at the end of the game? You know, how is that person going to perform when they have to overcome adversity? And so um, we're going to have some new faces, some new names. I can't necessarily say who's going to be the starter at this spot or that spot quite yet, but um, as a coach, it's, that's a huge emphasis come fall time is, figuring out these new guys that are here and what they can do and who um, who can overcome adversity, who can take that challenge on, who can, uh, you know, eliminate the noise outside and focus on what their job is and what they've got to do. Um, and then same thing when it comes to long snapper and short snapper earlier on the season, you know, we had some inconsistencies there. Um, you know, it, it cost us some points at times, you know, uh, there's times as a head coach, I went for it on two because of the lack of consistency just from a short snap uh, for kicking a PAT and, and so um, I'm very confident we're in a much, much better situation when it comes to, to those positions and those guys improving themselves. Um, and so, again, as a coach, it's nerve wracking, you know, because you're not getting live reps during spring ball all the time of kickoff and, and field goal and all these different things. But um, that is a huge, huge emphasis in the fall and uh, during fall camp. And 
you know, we're extremely anxious and excited to see how we can perform in those units. Well, and I know you can't give all the names just yet. I hope to get to visit with you again closer to the season, but that in mind, it's, it is about four months away. So it's tough to, you know, preview any of those games, but your schedule, you open at home uh, against uh, a new team, not only to uh, your conference, but also to the NAI as, as far as football goes. Right. William Woods coming to town on a Thursday night, August 29th, and that's the season opener. And then you're on the road against a Benedictine team, a very tough Benedictine team there, first Saturday in September. So uh, talk about the excitement. I know that you had those dates circled already. No, absolutely. You know, um, Coach Mendez, head coach at William Woods, uh, great person. I know he's been working his butt off. Um, you know, I've seen him at a number of different recruiting events and and uh, see him all over social media. And, you know, when you're starting a program like that, um, it's an incredible amount of work, something I don't think many people can fathom unless they're actually in those shoes. And so um, first off, hats off to him, what he's what he's been able to do so far. Um, just talking to him about uh, the recruiting efforts and, and everything they've got going on. Um, we're extremely excited. You know, it's going to be very interesting having a team that's never played a football game ever versus a team that's had football for 130 years, you know, and playing on a Thursday night is extremely exciting and should be a great atmosphere. I believe it's 7 p.m. kickoff on a Thursday night to start all of college football. Um, and, um, you know, the, the difficult thing for us at William Penn is, you know, we know we're going to be going against an inexperienced team when it comes to everybody, you know, playing at William Woods, obviously. Not sure how many transfers or whatever they have, but, um, you know, we really have no idea what they're going to do schematically. We have no idea how they're going to react to certain things, you know, how they're going to how they're, how they're going to do stuff. Um, you know, we've got a decent idea. Typically, we go against opponents, you know, with scouting them, what their favorite concepts are, all this different stuff. And and it's going to be very interesting going into that week zero game on August 29th of um, preparing our guys. And so, you know, we're going to have a good amount of time in camp where we've got to get prepared for pretty much everything. Um, and without a doubt, we also can't overlook them. Like you said, Benedictine, the, the, the game right after that, lost them by a field goal a year ago, so no doubt have that one circled. But we know they're going to they're gonna replace some guys that they lost. We know they're always going to be a team that's going to go fight and, and be a be a potential playoff-type opponent, and so we've got to make sure that we're getting our guys prepared for them and not overlooking a team like William Woods. Um, and, you know, after them, we've got, uh, I believe it's Baker at home, you know, another very, very <laughs> tough opponent. Um, and so we've got a, we've got a fairly challenging, uh, start to the season. And like you mentioned last year, didn't win a single game at home. Um, who knows what's going to happen, but we've got a much favorable, uh, schedule at home or home schedule, I guess you could say this, this past year or this upcoming year. And so we're hoping we can do whatever we can to ring the bell. Whenever we get home victories, you know, we'll have our whole team out there in the middle of the field and ring a large victory bell. And, um, hopefully we can get that done more often, uh, more often this season. I, I did like your take on that. I mean, it's it's kind of one of those pointed questions. What what happens at home? And you say, well, we play tough teams. <laughs> Sometimes that yeah. really that really sums it up. Even when you play well, you play tough teams. Coach, thank you so much for taking time with us today. I really appreciate that. We look forward to getting to see the Statesman out on the field again on August 29th. And that's one of those dates. It's it's a little bit more than four months away right now, but I know it's going to get here before we know it. So I appreciate you taking time with us today and success to William Penn and to you all in year two of your time there with the program. God bless you. We appreciate you being on with us today on the summit. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Joey.